Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Gina and I'm so super excited to be showing you this video today. I made this uh, spiral staircase out of a wooden fan and um, some wooden dowels and bits and pieces. I popped a little post on uh, Instagram and got so many comments back so I think this is going to be well anticipated. A bit of a tutorial step by step of how to how I actually created it. Um, it's going to be in a project well I've actually kind of started this one off prior to actually creating the um, room itself which I'm sure that you can appreciate that when you've got an idea or a project in your head that you just want to get done you've just got to do it you've just got to get it done otherwise you know it can just hold you back anyway so hope you enjoy and like this video and subscribe to my channel um, and make sure you put that notification bell on because you'll get to see some more videos coming up so yeah hopefully you enjoy Okay, so to begin with, I've got this little small wooden fan. I've just got one of them. Uh, I know that you can make this um, same um, staircase out of like multiple um, fans, but I knew that this the each of the uh, treads weren't going to be too uh, wide, so I'm going to gamble on it and just use the one fan on it. So I'm just going to take it apart and snip out each of the blades because I don't actually need that part there. Uh, and what I'm actually doing here now is just marking out where the edge of the spiral is going to go. And I'm going to mark those out and then uh, also the middle part and then cut away any pieces that I don't need. So here you can sort of see I've mapped out the actual stairs and how they will spiral around and I've kind of made sure that I've got the central piece um, in the middle and it'll make it a little bit more sense as we sort of go further down but the actual tread itself isn't going to be that wide. The, the actual spiral staircase is quite narrow. So I'm just going to mark out um, just on the edge there just where I really need to cut it and I'm going to cut it round on a slight angle so I'm not going to cut it square so that uh, when it all comes together you get this nice rounded effect um, of the staircase. It's actually not much of a curve at all but when it all comes together it will all make sense. So there you can see it's a little bit flimsy but I'm actually just going to stick with it. To su so to support uh, the middle part where the dowel is going to go through because I can't, um, because I'm only doing one layer, I'm going to need to strengthen it up. So I'm just using a, an extra wide popsicle stick. Um, it's not a very thick one as you can see because I'm able to cut it with my scissors. And uh, just using that to strengthen up the middle part where the wooden dowel is going to go through. So as you can see here, just where that little circle is and there's a little spot in the middle there. So that's basically where the dowel is going to go through. So I'm just going to try and strengthen that by um, gluing this uh, popsicle stick in behind it. So I'm just going to use some um, PVA glue. So it's sort of a uh, wood glue. Not the same as the wood glue that you can see in the background there, but it is um, just some PVA glue that's just going to help um, strengthen that up. And just going to stick those together. Um, and then once I've stuck those together, I'm just going to um, try and clamp it down because the fear that I have here at this stage is that everything's going to twist and warp as I start putting moisture on it. And of course glue is um, just basically moisture. So I'm just going to use another smaller popsicle stick as well as a peg because it's quite a small um, blade at the stage and I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to repeat the process. So I think I had from memory, I think I had about 23 blades. Um, so if you double this up, obviously then you there's half as many, 11. So, but I'm using a single layer because I actually want the spiral staircase to spiral back around on itself again. Whereas if I had uh, doubled up the blades, which I know some other others crafters have done that just to strengthen it up. Um, but I, yeah, like I say, the, the actual treads themselves aren't going to be too wide. Um, and I reckon I'll, I'll be able to strengthen it up. And actually, it, as it's turned out, it's, it's strengthened up quite nicely. 
So yeah, just doing that on that last one there. You can see my pretty rainbow in the background of all my pegs. Um, so yeah, just kind of making sure that it stays as flat as possible um, as the as I clamp it together and let, let it all dry. So just going to set that aside now and let that dry. So I'm going to just grab this wood glue. So wood glue dries quite solid. Um, it's kind of a PVA, but it seems to be a, a little bit different. Um, and it dries very solid. So I'm going to use this as my strengthening agent, so to speak. And I've just sped up this part of the video because it's actually quite tedious, as you can imagine. Um, but I'm just going to go over every single small part of that blade, as well as just making sure that I keep all the gaps open. So this is going to give it a slight metal tinge, because as the glue dries, it's going to sort of dry in a sort of, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like a, um, a bump. That's the best way I can describe it, a bump. Um, and so, and then when it dries really solid, I can paint over it. So it's gone, going quite white at the moment because it's obviously wet. When it dries, it just about disappears, so which is great. And then it um, just strengthens the whole uh, thing up as well. So I'm just going to do that for all blades. And this took a bit of time. And then anything that's sort of covered up, I'm just going to go back through with a smaller tool and just kind of remove any anything that's covered up there so that I can make sure that we can see through each of the blades. Um, yeah, so it did take a little bit of time. I just kind of sat there and just methodically went through them. It wasn't a very exciting job, but I just methodically went through all of them. So it just took, uh, I don't know quite how long it took, but it took a couple of good couple of hours to kind of get through. Yeah, so I did all 23 of those like that. Um, and again, just making sure that I kept all of the gaps open as possible. So there they are. There they all are finished. Um, I just did snip off the longer end. Um, so we've just got the um, popsicle stick and the wooden fan blade. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole into each one of these blades. Um, I guess if I had done it again, I probably would have used something slightly thicker than the popsicle stick. But in the long run, it all kind of worked out. It's, it's probably not as neat and clean as what I would have liked um, because the popsicle stick did tend to sort of splinter um, and break apart, which I'll just go back afterwards and um, fill up with a little bit of gap filler. So yeah, just going through each one of those blades, just creating the uh, hole for the dowel to go through. So it's a six millimeter dowel and that's a 6.5 millimeter drill bit just so that I've got a little bit more extra room to actually slide it onto the dowel. So once I've um, got through each one of these blades or actually got the drill through I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut around the actual hole itself so that um, we, and as close to the um, hole that I can just so that it creates um, a nice little shape that will actually sit around the dowel itself. And then I'm just going to cut away any excess um, blade and popsicle stick just to create as round a shape as I can. I'm honestly not going to fuss around with this too much because I don't want the blade or the fan blade to kind of splinter away and come apart. So... Um, you know, sometimes good is good enough, um, and this is definitely the situation that we're in here. So once I've kind of cut that away and reasonably happy with the rough shape of it, I'm just going to run a little bit of a test run and put a couple onto the dowel just to make sure, that one, that they fit on and that, it, that they're easily fitting on because I didn't want them to be too tight because otherwise, again, because I've only got the one fan blade and the popsicle stick, uh, they're not actually that um, thick and strong. Well, not yet anyway. So there you can see that's roughly what the look we're going for. So that's going to look out. That's going to look really good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So as you can see here, we've got some bits that have actually sort of chipped away. So before I go too much further, what I'm going to do is actually just fill in those gaps. Now it's not going to make any difference to the way that it fits onto the dowel or the structure of it, but later on when I start to paint it and start put it together, um, it's going to make it all 
look quite a little bit more cohesive so that potentially you could see those pieces um, if I didn't fill them in so I'm just using a bit of filler um, it's just a sort of actually it's what I use for sort of wallboard filler but um, it's going to get painted anyway so I'm not too worried about it being a wood filler um, or having to worry about taking stain or anything like that these are all going to get painted um, and yeah painted black as a base and then I'm going to use some um, metallics to actually create a bit of more of a metal look of the stairwell. So yeah, I just sort of um, use the, this little tool just to kind of smooth it out um, and fill that in because it's quite a small part. And then the other bit that I do as well is that if there's any um, part of the blades that are sort of coming away, I'm going to use a little bit of glue to fill in um, those and just make sure that everything is nice and secured down um, and nothing's really going to catch and flake off as I start pulling it together. So this one here is obviously just uh, warped a little bit and I'm just going to add a wee bit of glue in there just to make sure it's all nice and secure. And the more I kind of do this and the more glue that I add and as we start putting them onto the dowel and everything kind of starts to dry and harden, um, it just makes the whole structure a lot more sound at the moment it's still quite small so in order to keep the stair treads um, apart I'm going to use this um, really small piece of dowel it's about three millimeters thick um, I was going to use toothpicks but actually I didn't need to use them in the end and I'm just going to cut those like about one centimeter apart and I'm going to use those as spaces and I'm going to glue those um, one half to the back of one of the stairs as you can see here and then the other other end of it will glue to the underside of the stair above so just using again a bit of wood, wood glue and just kind of globbing it onto the end um, and then just using that to help sort of secure it into place so once that dries that'll be nice and secure and I'm just going to do that for a couple more and as you can sort of see I'm just going to use that other side of it just to add to the next stair above it'll make more sense as we start putting them together so yeah I'm just going to go through and add those little posts to each of them um, and then this is the base that I'm going to use um, for the whole project and I'm just going to drill I just drill through half of the depth of the board so I didn't want to go all the way through I'm just marking where the top of that dowel where the board comes up to the dowel and then just adding one centimeter up so the first step is going to be one centimeter above the base of the floor and then each stair um, above that will be one centimeter one centimeter apart so there you can sort of see it's just just off the ground so now we're going to add some more glue because we want to glue it all together and glue upon glue upon glue will actually um, so make sure it's nice and strong so I'm just adding some more wood glue to the piece and I'm just going to add that around where the steer connects to the uh, dowel itself and I'm going to do this on each one of the um, treads as well so once I've got that done and we can move on to actually adding the next steer so this process gets repeated through all of the um, all of the different steers steers treads same thing um, and I'm going to use a mix of glue so I'm going to use the wood glue which we've obviously been using um, so far as well as some Fabri-Tac glue so the Fabri-Tac glue I use to it's kind of a quick bond um, and I'm going to use that here so just really quickly running that round it's quite sticky and quite tacky it does got a little bit more play but it doesn't take as long to dry as what the wood glue does and then I'm just going to tap a little bit of wood glue onto the top of that post there and then push the that steer down into the Fabri-Tac glue as well as the onto the post which will be on the opposite side of the steer on the underside of the steer so this is now starting to create the spiral effect of the, um, of the staircase and this is basically just going to get repeated um, over and over again as we kind of use go through all of the different stairs there um, and then of course repeating the process of just making sure that it's all 
nicely secured. This actually helps fill in any, any gaps that might be there as well. And so here you can clearly start to see the spiral taking shape, um, which is starting to look pretty good. And um, sorry about the camera angle there, but you know, you can get an idea of the glue and then just adding that to the post and we'll just and then adding that um, next tread on top of what we've got there and then basically it's rinse and repeat from here on in to get the whole thing all connected together so yeah and then I just kind of um, eyeball it up just to make sure that it is level um, that it's evenly spaced, um, that it just looks right. Um, I'm not really putting a ruler over it. I haven't marked the dowel or anything like that as to the correct spacing. I'm literally just eye eyeing it up and just making sure does it look about right. And you can see there I'm sort of adjusting it, twi twisting it around, just trying to get as level as possible before I move on to the next one. But that Fabri-Tac kind of glue does actually grip quite quickly, so it doesn't take too long. And I'm not having to wait or worry about knocking the next step when I put the put the following one on. So that's it there. That's all the treads all on this the spiral um, and is actually kind of holding up on its own. Um, what I do, you can kind of see off to the side there, it's all painted black. I just put one coat of acrylic black flat black acrylic on it and what I'm doing here is actually creating the balustrades so what I'm wanting to do is create a bit of um, spiraled metal look for them um, so in the inspiration piece it's definitely got this um, this sort of detail and I just uh, cut a, a, a narrow strip of cardstock and at the moment I'm just trying to work out how long I want to make the individual cardstock and then I know that I'm going to repeat this I'm just going to take a quick measurement of it it's about four centimeters so that's cool and then I'm just going to spiral it one way and then I'm going to turn it over and spiral it back um, the other way so I almost get this S type of shape that actually um, is spiraling back on itself and I've just got a couple of um, needle nose pliers there that I'm just using to try and tighten up the cardstock and sort of bend it round um, just so that it's easier to kind of maneuver. This is so tiny and I apologize if my hands are all in the way I'm trying to kind of um, make it as easy and clear as possible. So yeah so that's that's one and then I'm just going to go on and, and create the next one. One thing I did find, oh there we go, so that's that's it there and that's the shape that I'm looking for and then I'll just um, create another one identical for that and then once I've got both of them I'm just going to use that same three millimeter dowel that I used for the little posts on the stairs and I've cut this one I want to say about 60 centimeters and then I'm just going to glue these paper scrolls on each side and then that's going to actually sit on the each steer tread. I'm going to do every second steer tread. But um, one thing I didn't film was the um, handrail which you can actually see sitting in the background. So it is made out of um, armature wire. You can sort of see the silver armature wire which is a bit that I cut off. And what I did was actually just lay it on each on the actual tread. I know it's going to be lifted up, but it's actually laid on the, each of the treads and then just manipulated it around so that it's spiraled round. So here you can kind of see um, I've just put a couple of those balustrades in and the handrail on so you can kind of see how it's lifted up. And because I uh, shaped it uh, to the exact um, dimensions of the actual spiral, it was really quite quick and easy to pl place on once I had the balustrades all created as well. So I've just kind of glued a couple of them in place because then after I kind of started off on this um, part of it, I was obviously jumping well ahead of myself. I realized that uh, trying to get the paintbrush in there is probably not going to be ideal. So uh, here I'm just adding a bit of metallic paint over top of the black and uh, also using that over some of the balustrades and the um, the metal work it's not really metal work though is it it's paperwork but it's just over the scroll work there uh, so the base is black 
and then I am basically dry brushing silver, metallic silver, over the top of the stairs. Um, I'm kind of putting it on quite um, liberally um, because it I do want it to be quite uh, a metal finish. Um, once I've gone over it with that silver, then I'm going to use even a, a lighter touch with a bit of gold just to add a little bit more depth to it. And then finally I go back over with some a little bit of bronze just on those very edges of the steps because what I'm trying to do is create some wear, some natural wear uh, and just trying to uh, and bring some of those highlights out. So for the back of the stairs I'm just going to leave those black. I do want to create a bit of definition between the two so the top treads are going to have that almost worn metal look and in the back I'm just going to leave absolutely black so that it creates more um, shadow and more moodiness um, and of course you wouldn't be walking on the underside of the stairs anyway so it's not going to have as much wear and tear as what the top of the stairs will do. So um, yeah, I'm just going to continue on with this process and um, just on top of the stairs. I do go over the handrail just slightly and just add a little bit there as if, so if um, it had been, you know, many generations of hands being run down the, st down the handrail. Um, I am trying this camera angle, so as you can see I was kind of getting a little bit um, off camera there, but there we go. But um, yeah, that's basically the project, so hopefully you enjoy.